Okay then gang, in this lesson I want to talk about something called mock functions, which are basically functions in our test code, which mock other functions in your production code, and you can also change their implementation too. Now that might seem a little strange when you hear it like that, so let me go through an example and hopefully you'll see what I mean. So, I'm looking at the deal function right now from the last lesson, which takes in an array of cards and deals them out to X number of players to make X number of hands. And inside this function, I added this little log deal round function call right here, which runs inside this for loop that iterates X number of times once per deal round. For example, it runs when one card has been dealt to every player, then again when another card is dealt to every player, and then again and again until all the cards have been dealt according to the hand size. Now we pass the current value of the hands into that function call plus the round number and then inside that function which I've already created in a file called loggers.js inside a helpers folder we log out the hands of each player. So considering this function runs every time a round of cards gets dealt that's potentially a lot of logging to the console and now when we run the test by clicking on the play button up here we can see that in the test results console we're going to get all of those logs which is a hell of a lot of bloat we don't really need. And also it's quite distracting when we're really only concerned with testing the deal function itself. And in fact, we probably wouldn't care at all about this call to the logger function if it wasn't critical to the rest of the code, which it isn't. So in scenarios like this, when we're testing one function, which maybe calls another function within it, we might want to mock that inner function call. And when we mock the inner function, we're basically telling VTest to replace that function call whenever it comes across it with that mock one we supply. So let's give this a quick go in the test file for the deal function. All right, if we open that file up then, you can see that we've already got a couple of tests that call the deal function, right? And when that happens, the logger function also inadvertently gets called, which is why we see all those logs in the console when we run the tests. Now though, we're gonna mock that function by first of all, importing something called V from VTest up here. Then above the test suite, we're gonna use a method on that called mock to mock an entire module. So we say V dot mock and we invoke that method. Now as the first argument of this mock method, we pass in a path to a module that we want to mock. In our case, that should be dot dot forward slash to come out of the current folder, then into the source folder, and then we want to go into the helpers folder, and then the file name is loggers. So this line of code then creates empty mock functions for every exported function in this module or file. For us, that means it's going to make an empty mock function for the log deal round function. And what that means is whenever VTest is running the test in this file and it comes across a call for that logger function, it's going to replace it with the empty mock function automatically created for us. So then if I save this file again and then press the play button to run all the tests again, we should see that in the test console, we don't get those logs anymore because VTest replaced those function calls with function calls to an empty mock function. So that was simple enough, right? We've made mock functions now for every function that might be exported from a whole module. Now, as well as creating empty mock functions for a module like this, we can also customize the body of a mock function. And we can do that by passing a function as the second argument here, which then returns an object. And this object essentially replaces the entire imported module. So inside this object, we should register any functions from this module that we want to customize the implementation of. In our case, we want to customize the log deal round function. So we can add that function name as a property right here in this object. Now, as a value to that, we create a mock function by saying v.fn and invoking that fn method. Inside the method, we pass a function that we want to replace the log function with. So let's pass in an empty function first of all, and then we can just customize the body of this function. So in the original implementation, we log out the player's hands for every round of cards that is dealt. And in this one, we're going to change that to just a very simple console log message instead, just so we can test that this works. And that message can be something like mock fn called. So what this means is that when we run these tests now and the deal function gets called, and then within that the log deal round function gets called, vtest is going to replace that function call with this mock function right here. 
and therefore we should see several of these logs to the console. So then let's save this file and rerun the tests. And when we do that, we should see the new message logged down here instead. Awesome. Now then, importantly, when we do this, when we have this function as a second argument which returns an object, then that object essentially replaces the entire module import. So that means if you try to use any other function from this file directly by importing it up here and then manually invoking it somewhere, then that function won't work because it will essentially be undefined if it's not registered in this returned object. Using the log deal round one would still work and it would have this mocked functionality, but any other function from that module wouldn't work because it's not been specified right here. So a way to combat this is by coming above the returned object and saying const, and then we'll make this constant called originals. We'll set that equal to await v, and then we're going to use a method on that called import actual, and we invoke it. And then we just need to pass in the path to the module, which is the same one as we added just above. So let's copy that and then we can paste it right here. Also, because we're using await inside this function, we'll need to make sure the function is asynchronous by adding async up here in front of it. So this line of code imports all the original functions from the module. And now we can just spread those into the returned object before any custom implementations. So at the top of the object, we can say dot, dot, dot originals. And now the returned module, so to speak, contains all the original functions plus one mocked function, the log deal round one. And if we wanted to, we could add more custom mock implementations like this for other functions from the module by doing the same thing as we've done for the log deal round function. Okay, so we can also use any mocked functions directly within test to do things like track how many times it gets called or access its returned value. So to demo this, I'm going to paste in a new test case down here and this one says it calls the logger correct number of times. So we want to assert inside this test for whatever reason that the logger function gets called the same amount of times as there are cards in each hand, right? Now inside this test, we already create some cards using this create cards function. And now the first thing we're gonna do is call the deal function, passing the cards as the first argument, all right? And then we'll say five for the hand size and three for the number of players. Then down here, we're gonna make an assertion by using the expect function and invoking it. And then I'm gonna pass in the name of the logger function, which is log deal round. Now in order to use that function directly like this in this file, we need to import it right at the top. So let's do that by coming up and we will say import, then curly braces, and we want the log deal round function. Okay. And that comes from dot dot forward slash to come out of the folder, then into the source folder, then into the helpers folder. And then finally the file name is loggers. Okay, so once we've done that, we can freely use the function in an assertion down here. And again, what I want to do now is use a match on this called to have been called times. And then we're going to pass in the number five. And it's the number five because when we invoke the deal function, we passed in five as the hand size. So that's how many deal rounds there should be. And by the way, if we didn't mock this function, log deal round, then we wouldn't be able to use this assertion and match it on it because we can't monitor functions by default. But when we make a mock function, VTest can then monitor that function and detect things like how many times it gets called. Anyway, we're saying here we expect it to be called five times, which should pass, right? But when we save this file and we rerun the test, you're going to see that it fails. And it actually says this function was called 17 times, which is not five. So why is that? Well, when we mock a function like we did at the top of this file, then VTest keeps track of how many times that function gets called across all of the tests, not just one of them in this case, because we mocked it outside of an individual test, right? And that counter doesn't reset then for every single test case. It just keeps going up whenever the function gets called. And it gets called several times whenever we invoke the deal function in each individual test case. So the reason this test is failing is because that mock function has been called 17 times in total across all of these tests by the time it reaches this final assertion. 
Now to combat this, we can very easily come to the top of the test case and we can take the log deal round function, which is being mocked, and we can use a method on that called mock clear and invoke it. And what that does is it resets the counter for us back to zero, essentially. And now if we save this file and run the test again, then we should hopefully see them all passing again. Awesome. All right, so very quickly, one more thing. We can also access returned values from mock functions and use them. So for example, the function you mock might originally do something like maybe retrieve an interest rate and then return that number. And instead of that original logic being run as it is, doing something and returning what could seemingly be a random number, you can mock the return value to be something that you want to test. Now, we're not using interest rates or anything like that in this application, but I will quickly show you how it can be done. So let's come back to the mocked log deal round function at the top and let's return a Boolean value from this function like true. And now regardless of what the original log deal round function returns, whenever VTest comes across it in these tests, it will return the value true. I can demo that by coming back down to the bottom test case and we're gonna add another assertion down here by saying expect and we wanna pass in the log deal round function. And then on this, I'm gonna add the matcher to have been returned with, and I'll pass true as the value into this matcher. So now we're asserting that when this log deal round function gets called from within the deal function, we're expecting that function to return this value. And because we mocked that function, we know what it does. But let's save the file and run the test again just to make sure, and hopefully we should see that all the tests are still passing. So then my friends, that's how to mock functions and there is much more to it than this, but to cover everything would take an entire course in itself. And that's something that I might consider in the future, but definitely read a bit more about it in the VTest docs if you're interested. Next up though, we're gonna switch our focus to spies, which allows us to spy on function calls.